This is the Hassan's Maths channel, and I'm now going to answer question number five from the Mechanics 1 paper from June 2024 of the Edexcel International A level exam. This question here we have a parachute which is used to deliver a box of supplies. The parachute is attached to the box. The parachute and box are dropped from rest from a helicopter that is hovering at a height of 520 meters above the ground. The parachute and box fall vertically and freely under gravity for five seconds. Okay, F vertically and freely under gravity for five seconds. Then the parachute opens. Okay, from the instant the parachute opens, it provides a resistance to motion of magnitude 3,200 newtons. The parachute and box continue to fall vertically downwards after the parachute opens. The parachute and box are modeled throughout the model, uh, throughout the motion as a particle P of mass 250 kilograms. So part A says find the distance traveled by or distance fallen by P in the first five seconds. So I've got the information here so that I don't have to keep, you know, you can see it from here anyway, so no, no problem. Anyway, the parachute and box are dropped from rest from a helicopter that is hovering at a height of 520 meters above the ground. The parachute and box fall vertically and freely under gravity for five seconds. Then the parachute opens. So the parachute opens. Okay, let's, let's call the level that they are at the beginning. Let's call that level O. Um, oops. Let's call that level O. And the level that, I, that they are at after five seconds, let's call that level A. So we want to find, we know that between O to A, we're, we're looking between O to A. We know that the object is falling downwards. Okay, so I'm going to take down as positive. I'm going to list my values that I know for SUVAT. I know that S is what I have to find, the distance from O to A. So S is OA, okay, which I have to find. I'll just, I'll just put SA. That's the distance it falls from O to A, of course. U is zero because it says here they dropped from rest. V, we don't know. I'll call that V the velocity at A. A is basically the uh, acceleration due to gravity, which is G, and I'll call it positive G. Why? Because I'm taking down as positive because it's falling down. Its initial movement is, movement is downwards. And T, we've got to find that, well, we know the the time is five seconds. We've got to find how far it falls in those five seconds. So we're dealing with S, U, A, and T. We don't know what V is. S, U, A, and T. We could find V, but we don't need in, in this first part of the question. So we can we can use S equals U, T plus a half A, T squared. So we know U is zero, so this is going to become zero. We're going to left with a half times G times 5 squared. So G we could just use as 9.8. We should use as 9.8 in M1 of Excel. And that will give us the distance it's fallen down. So we get, take the calculator. So you're going to have a half times 9.8 times 5 squared, which gives you 122.5, 122.5 meters. That's the distance that it's fallen in the first five seconds. Okay, now part B. It says, find the speed with which P lands on the ground. Okay, so now we've got to think about um, the new situation. So we've got to think about now the situation from A to the ground. Okay, so from A to the ground. So we're going to put A here, and I'm going to put the ground here, G. Okay, so now we're going from A to the ground. Okay, so A to G. All right, so what do we know here in this situation? So we've got to think about the situation now. So um, this time, there's a difference here. If we use SUVAT here, the difference now is that in this case, the parachute is now opened. Okay. From the instant the parachute opens, it provides a resistance of motion of 3,200 newtons. They continue to fall vertically downwards after the parachute opens. The parachute and box are modeled throughout the motion as a particle of mass, 250 kilograms. So now what we have to do is we have to find 
the acceleration. Okay, so we have to make an equation of motion. We know the forces acting upon this object are its weight. Its weight. Let me just do that properly. And we know that the mass of the particle is 250. That's going to be 250 G. And also the resistance now, because the parachute is open, there's a resistance of motion which will act opposing the motion which is going to be acting upwards because it's falling downwards. So the resistance to motion is going to act vertically upwards and that is 3,200 newtons, 3,200 newtons. So it's accelerating downwards. So what we have to do is we have to find the new acceleration. I cannot use acceleration as G. In this case, the acceleration is not equal to G. Okay, the acceleration of the object is not equal to G because it's not falling freely under gravity. In the first case, it was falling freely under gravity. So that's why it was G. Now, it's not falling freely under gravity. There's also air resistance. So we need to resolve the forces um, downwards. So we have 250 G minus 3200 is equal to the mass, which is 250 times acceleration. So acceleration is going to now be 250 times 9.8 minus 3200 over 250. So we can calculate that. We're going to have 250 times 9.8 minus 3,200 over 250. And that gives us negative 3. Um, why is it negative 3? Okay, it's negative 3 because it's slowing down. Okay, so the acceleration is negative 3 meters per second squared. Okay, so the acceleration is negative 3. Now, we got to find um, the speed with which it lands on the ground. So the distance is falling from, okay, so it's fallen 122.5 meters from O to A. So we've got to work this out now. Okay, so this is the distance it's fallen so far. Okay, that distance is, as we said, 122.5. Okay, so the total distance is, is going to fall from the beginning to the end. So I'll just do it like this. The total distance is going to fall is 500 and, what is it, 520 meters. Okay, so this distance here is going to be the difference between them. So this distance is going to fall is 520 minus 122.5. That's the distance it's left to fall. Okay, so we're going to have uh, 520 minus 122.5. That gives us 397.5. So that's 397.5 meters is how much it's got left to fall. Okay, from when the parachute opened. Its initial speed, okay, now it was moving at a speed at this point, this is VA. This is the, the speed of A in this situation. Okay, so we got to consider from O to A, we got to consider that section there. And we got to find the, velo the velocity at A is equal to um, U plus, uh, V equals U plus AT. Okay, we have those things from here. So that's zero plus A, which is 9.8 times t, which is 5. So we can find the velocity that it was at when it reached a. So that's going to be 0. Point, that's going to be 9.8 because u plus 80 times 5. So it's just 80 basically, which is 49. So that's 49 meters per second. So the velocity at a is uh, the the initial velocity at a is going to be. So now this is now UA. See, it's, it's the new situation, that's the beginning velocity. That's going to be 49. And the final speed of A is what we have to find. The speed with which it hits the ground at the time, we don't know. Okay, so we've worked out the acceleration now. So we have to deal with S and U and V and A. So we can use V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now we want to find V, so V squared equals U squared, which is 49 squared plus two times minus three times S, S is 397.5. Okay, so that's gonna give us, okay, 
49 squared plus 2 times minus 3 times 397.5. This gives us 16. So we've got V squared is equal to 16. So V is going to be 4 meters per second. Okay, remember we're taking down as positive, right? Down as positive. So that's 4 meters per second going down. So that is the speed of, so that's the velocity we can say the speed, the speed, okay, with which P hits the ground is equal to 4 meters per second. Now, don't make the mistake of like some students who say, oh, the speed with which it hits the ground is going to be zero because it stops when it hits the ground. No, it's not the speed, you know, after it has hit the ground. It's the speed at which it hits the ground. If you jump off a building and you, fall, you jump down, you're not going to hit the, 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 the floor at zero meters per second. You're going to hit the floor at some speed and then you're going to stop because the floor's there, all right? You'll be splat across the floor. So you hit the speed at a certain, you hit the ground with a certain speed, okay? And in this case, this parcel hit the, the ground with a speed of four meters per second, okay? So, uh, you know, it's, it slowed right down because of the parachute. So it was decelerating by the time it hit the ground, okay? So that is the answer to part B of this question, okay? And it's very important that you get your kind of thinking straight about this. The acceleration between O and A is different between than it is between A and G. I can't use the same values of SUVAT here that, that I can use here. Acceleration is different, okay? The speed with which this reaches A is now the speed with which it starts its new, new journey. It's new journey now with this resistance to motion because the parachute opened. Okay, so you have to be very careful about how to use these values. Okay, now we're gonna go on to part C. Okay, now for part C, but in fact, I need to go back to part A. Something that's quite important, the final answer for part A, we should give to 3, 3SF or 2SF. Okay, because we use G here, it's rounded basically, it's like considered a rounded value. So we should use it to either 2SF or 3SF. So we could write 120, um, well, sorry, we could write, yeah, 120 to 2SF, or we could write 123. I'm going to leave it to 3SF, but you would lose a mark if you leave it like this, because this is considered rounding to 4SF. You might think it's an exact value, but it's not, because we've used G as 9.8, which G has been rounded. So we've used, a, we've used a rounded version of G, which we're told to do anyway. So technically, our answer should be 120 meters, our final answer. Okay, but you should write it as 123. So that should be your final answer here, 123 or 120. Okay, I'll, I'll keep it as 123. Both of them would be acceptable. Okay, but don't leave it as 122.5. You might lose a mark for that. Okay, so be careful. I, I, I kind of skipped my attention at the beginning. But when I'm using, um, you know, the calculation, I'm going to write it like, I'm going to use my calculation as 122.5 in my working to keep accuracy in the answers. Okay, and so that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to use it as 123 or 122, um, 120. I'm going to use it as 122.5, but all my final answers will be rounded to 3SF if necessary. Okay, um, so that, that's something very important for us to realize that I kind of skipped my attention in the beginning. Now, so find the total time from the instant when P is dropped from the helicopter to the instant when P lands on the ground. All right, so we know for the first part, we already know they told us it took five seconds. So from O to A, there's no issue. We know already the time is five seconds. So what we have to find now is the time for this second uh, kind of part of its motion, okay, which is from there to there, okay? So we already have the SUVAT values. So from A to G, we need to find the SUVAT values, which we already have, actually. So S is 397.5. U is 49, B is 4, A is negative 3, and T is what we have to find. So if we were unsure about our V value, okay, we could use, um, you know, S, U, A, and T, 
um, we could use su s equals u t plus a half a t squared, okay, to find the value of uh, t. If we were unsure about our velocity value, right, uh, we could do that, okay, because we calculated this, but we, we cal calculate this based on that. So, I mean, you could use v equals u plus a t, which is much easier because you don't have any squares to, to deal with. So if you use v equals u, v equals u plus at, again, we're taking down as positive. So v is equal to u, which is 49. Okay, so v, which is 4, equals u, which is 49, plus minus 3 times t. So we end up with uh, 4 minus 49, which is minus 45, equals negative 3t. So t is going to be minus 45 over negative 3, which is 15 seconds. So we can say the total time is between the time between O to A and then the time between A to G. So that's 5 seconds, that's 15 seconds, so it's 15 seconds. That's the total time it will take to 4. Okay. If we want to make sure S equals UT plus a half AT squared, that's going to be a lot more hassle because we're going to have to deal with a quadratic equation. Um, so I think this is fine, but we could use, if we if we didn't want to use the V that we calculated, we could use S equals UT plus a half times AT squared, and we'd have a quadratic equation to solve, which will give us one of the answers as T equals 15, and that would be a bit more hassle. So I think this is perfectly good to do it this way. And now we're going to go on to part D. Okay, now for part D, it says sketch a speed time graph for the motion of P from the instant when P is dropped from the helicopter to the instant when P lands on the ground. Okay, so first of all, it's falling with an acceleration of 9.8. Okay. Um, and then it's falling with an acceleration which is negative 3. Okay, so the speed time graph, its speed is going to increase until it reaches 49 uh, meters per second from zero. Then it's going to uh, decrease un until it reaches 4. And the magnitude of the acceleration is going to be greater than that of the deceleration in terms of its uh, its magnitude. That's 9.8, that's 3. So you're going to have something that looks something like this. We'll just draw a little speed time graph. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. So this is your speed in meters per second, and this is your time in seconds. So it starts from rest. Okay, it starts from rest, and it's and the gradient is 9.8. It's going to reach a speed of 49 meters per second from zero, from rest. And then what's going to happen is, it's going to, its speed is going to decrease. It's going to decelerate until it reaches, when it hits the ground, four meters per second. Okay, so this is the first five seconds. And then this is the 20th second. And this is going to be four meters per second when it hits the ground. Okay, it's going to be traveling at four meters per second at the point which hits the ground. So I guess this is good enough for our speed time graph. Okay, so that's five seconds, that's 20 seconds, and there we have our speed time graph. Okay, simple as that. Let's just make this a bit neater. Okay, so that's fine. Um, get, get the speed time graph for the motion of the P from the instant when P is dropped from the helicopter. So that's the first five seconds, then it slows down to the instant when it lands on the ground. Okay, good. So there we have part D, and that concludes this question. This question um, number five from the Mechanics 1 paper from June 2024, International A Level at Excel. Other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear on the top right of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from the topic of um, vertical motion under gravity, you can find it in the playlist that will be appearing over here at the end of the video. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link, and on the top here, you can. Um, watch a video which tells you how to use my channel to find those things that you might be interested in finding. Thank you for watching and see you soon.